Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We worship our God this morning. Hallelujah. Just want to say welcome to each and every one this morning in the presence of our mighty God. Hallelujah. As we come together this morning to lift up his name, to glorify, to magnify, and to exalt our King. Hallelujah. Stand us morning, hallelujah. I just want to say good morning and welcome. Oh, hallelujah, to those that are viewing us right across. Hallelujah, the globe this morning. We serve a mighty God, hallelujah. We serve a wonderful God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Oh, the word of God declares that I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
to the throne of grace this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, just keep in the spirit today. We bless his name. We bless his name today. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Surely you are the living of our body this morning. Father, we worship you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we exalt you this morning. Mighty God, you are none like you this morning, Jesus. We want you, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mighty God. Thou shalt speak. 
eight and appointed. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Can we repeat verse 8, believers? Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We honor by saying, thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Our hymns, our hymn this morning is shall, there shall be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. Are we ready to receive the shower of blessing this morning? Hallelujah. Can we please stand again? There shall be showers. Yeah. 
bless him. Glory to God. The song man says, send them upon us, O Lord. Send them upon us, O Lord. What is it you need from the Lord today? Just ask him to send it upon us today. Send your blessing upon me today, God. Hallelujah. Give a praise. Glory to God. Sister Shamoya will bless our morning signs and offering. Remember it's a walk of offering. Also, remember our charity box. Because of your giving, we are able to give. I want to also use this opportunity to thank each and every giver in this house this morning. God bless you. Without you, we could not have made it through 2020 and continue to make it in 2021. God wish to bless you this morning as you continue to give. Sisters, Sally. Father, we thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you for your gifts, Mary God, coming into our storehouse and pray that you bless it. Mary God, bless the givers, bless, Mary God, the hands to stretch towards you today. Bless those who don't have to give. In Jesus' name, have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen, amen.
She's our own Miss Selena Maturi. A very a radical woman of God. Hallelujah. Our Minister Maturi this morning is our regional women's ministry president. And as we have heard over the week, she's working along with our Minister Darum in readiness. Evangelism is Minister Maturi's heart. And today is a fitting day for us for us to receive from the Lord what he has to say to us through Minister Maturi. As today, fourth Sunday, is designated as our evangelism Sunday. I invite us now to put our hands together as we welcome Minister Maturi as she comes. And the God we serve is a good God. He is so excellent and so mighty that He alone can use dirt and get something good out of it. This morning I just want to bring with Him all and God's lovely people. It's a blessing to have in the house of the Lord this morning. Pastor Clark, my daddy. Hallelujah, my spiritual father. I want you to know my heart is with you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. I am praying for you. It's a privilege to be called this morning, hallelujah, to lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they're saved. The lesson is already ready for this morning. And as you know, my calling is evangelism. And evangelism is the heartbeat of Christ. And God is calling both young and old to come, to run with the good news. For there is no other time we need to be solidified and understand what we or what our calling is. It is in this season when the world, hallelujah, is in chaos. Homes are in chaos. Lives are falling apart. Marriages are falling apart. If there is no other time, all of us need to be united as a force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To, pop, to, to, pop, to tear down Satan's kingdom and to populate heaven is now. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have you ever He was 
and made him strong and courageous, even though he was a young man. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, age has nothing to do, hallelujah, with it. It's all about the anointing. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said it's all about the anointing. Hallelujah. God will call your puppy by age. Hallelujah. And place his anointing in you. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with your age. For the anointing is bigger than your age. And there is no age on the anointing. The anointing keeps you fresh. The anointing keeps you steady. The anointing keeps you focused. Why don't want to run ahead of myself? So there was a God called Jeremiah. The word of God came to Jeremiah. And God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before I found you in the womb, I knew you. That means none of you learned that I'm mistake. God knew your sister Pauline. God knew me. We might not be all the same place at the same time, but God knew us. You are called for a purpose. And you are anointed for a purpose. God knew you. He knew when he was on the cross, you were there. Put him out. In generation, put him out. They 
the king said that he come back in from Daima. He called him a babla. He was a lonely man in the heights of the society. Jeremiah looked like a failure, but in the heights of God, Jeremiah was one of the greatest prophets. You know why Jeremiah speak the God out Because the anointing was upon him. He was sanctified. He was called. When you call Satan, can't put you down. When you carry the anointing, oh my God, you are back from the back. For the anointing cannot be When the anointing is upon your life, you are still in Isaiah. What is your job description? What is your position? Hallelujah. There is, there is a world out there that is stumbling down, that is crumbling, and all of us have to come together round the one accord in unity. You do your part and I do my part for the building of the kingdom of God. Can I tell you souls are dying left, right, and center? Can I tell you young man are jumping like flies? Can I tell you mothers are dying, husbands are dying, homes are crumbling, ministers are going down, pastors are being disgraced. Now, God Almighty, there's not a time for you to go your job description is now. God is calling. Oh, you want that thirsty coma? Come without money, come without price. God tell us to go on the highways and the byways and to teach and to preach our call. Do you have a desire for the world that has been torn down? Crime and violence, scamming, killing, broken home, broken walls. Hallelujah. You, I, 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 I don't know, maybe that's why I can't do a much because I would, have, I would be afraid of the top of the road. For some time you take some beat and nobody will hear about you again. And you don't even find the body to bury. Am I telling you we have no time to waste? Whether you are or who are, we have to rise to the call and understand that God is anointed. He's one of us. And we have to do it in our walking, do it in our talking, do it the way we live, do it the way we love, and do it again because Jesus Christ ordered it. Put your hands together. Blessed be the name. God appointed a prophet to the nation. It was not easy for Jeremiah to run with the good news. Do you think it is easy to be carrying the good news yet having opposition and burden? And sometimes they run with the good news and when they finish with it, they cry to God. Jeremiah cried out to God when he see what was taking place in the society. Jeremiah was upset and I heart and Jeremiah cried to God. Jeremiah said, God, the people they are not worried. They become back sitting. They become stiff naked. And Jeremiah was complaining to God. And God said to Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 9 and verse 20. Go down there, Jeremiah, and tell the women. Say they must hear me. And they must listen to my voice. Because they has come up in our window. <coughs> death has come up in our window. And death has come in our policy to take out our young men. God said, tell them to remind them that they must teach their daughter weary. If there's not a time we need to hold our men and ball is no. We must ball because we are off the ball. If God not take your own COVID, 
No longer can the children and the young men roam the street because death has come up in our window. This morning, mothers, do you have a concern? Fathers, do you have a concern? We have to show, we have to, we have to buy the more ways. Put on our sandals and go on the highways and the byways and pull them out by force. Pull them out from the east. Pull them out from the west. Because the world is in chaos. And God is expecting you and I. Hold on young to play your part. Put your hands together for Jesus. The church was called to go to the world. Did you know that? The church was called to go to the world. I said the church was called to go to the world. Thursday evening, I went with Sister Dyer to go into the community. When I went there, it looked so dizzy, mom. Seemed like nobody cared. And time was again, so I will have the light we expected that and this will push out. We said, no man, go and get the back. Service of the key. Because if you don't have no action, you don't have no desire. If you don't have time to the point, you don't have no zeal. So we pushed by the back, so we came back. And we jumped around to houses. And let me tell you something, Sister Pauline. We see people tell me you're referring to me not talking to me as we care for Sister Mother and too much people. And we brought the gospel, hallelujah, right here in the dark. So many people came out because what somebody has a concern. The work of God must go on. And God ain't coming down here to do it. You know why? Because He has placed the night that you and I. And we must get up and rise to the cross. God is calling this morning. God wants God to send us to the world. We must send the good news in our God in authority. You know why some people can't send the good news? Because of the way they live, they are ashamed to tell people, say Jesus save. Because it's one way Sunday, Monday, man, and different way Sunday. Ah, uh, but we have to live and know that God can use us and anoint us, make ourselves available. Like here was available so she could be used for the work of God. It is the anointing makes you qualify. It is the anointing that sets you apart. It is the anointing that gives you the strength. How do you think Jeremiah could have made it? Hallelujah after all that he has been through. We must send the good news in our God-given authority to make disciples. We have no time to waste. Hallelujah. We have no time to sit back and be comfortable. We have to go here and be disciples. Are you ready? Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Are you ready this morning? We have a, we have, we have a mandate to go out there. Hallelujah. And to make disciples. We have a mandate. Hallelujah. To go out there. And to make disciples. I said the church have a mandate to go out there. And to make disciples. And disciples will call on us as we go along and we are all here to preach the word of God. God bless the pastor. To preach the word of God. We have a responsibility to teach the word of God. We have a responsibility to baptize them. We have a responsibility to call them out of sin. We have a responsibility to let them know that there is a fountain filled with blood. Draw from the man who is And every sinner that comes to do their gift and sin. We have a duty to them. We have a responsibility. Is the same God in the valley. And it's one thing I, I learned, Sister Valley. 
It doesn't matter what comes up on me. It's only a season. Because the God I serve will bring us through. Put your hands together for Jesus.
From the morning I am in the bathroom and I can't pass water. I said, Almighty God, what are you going to do, my sister? She said, I have nobody to help me, just my little grandbaby is here with me. I said, I felt it in my belly to call you. She said, I don't know what to do. Nobody is here to carry me. I said, let me call somebody. And I called somebody first to pick her up. And this man, when I called, she said, they had to admit her in the hospital. Tell me how many times they are that you know that. If the Lord never tell me to call you. No, you are tired. You get a man chance to pray. He prayed and he prayed to him. Say that good word. Say that word of encouragement. Did you know the greatest school right now? He can't send the good news suddenly. I said he can't send the good news suddenly. It's a tool to be used for evangelism. Your mouth is a tool to be used for evangelism. Your heart is a tool to be used for evangelism. We must see the situation and see the condition and have the desire that we're going to change hands and all together to make it better. Put your hands together for Jesus. We must reach the world at all costs. But for us to reach the world, it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take your time. It's going to take your money. And it's going to take your body and talent. Some people don't want to get nothing. And that's why what we have now multiplied. Guys, you're like, no, no, you can't come in. Put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody tell me the presence go. The blessing come down. The more you do for God, is the more God do for you. I was at home just a couple of weeks ago in January here. And I said, God, you know, I think I should just tell Bishop to black me out. And I just come to church. I don't really want to be bothered. And I'm happy to preach again and I'm embarrassed that I got to sit. And the Lord said to me, Shark, that you know your ministry just begin. And he began to show me places where it is. And other places that I must go and preach the gospel. So I said, Well, I'm not going to see if I got a call. Now that you tell me, it's not going to be a direct call. Where God calls, He makes the provision. Where God calls, He sanctifies. Where God calls, Hallelujah, He places the earth and the desire upon you to do exploit. It's not what you can do, but it is what God.
two on the tree must decide to stand up for the cause. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The anointing gives us power to witness. Take away fear. Take away doubt. Give you boldness. What is the man of smoking gun guy at the Lima Draw Fest? Where are you sitting in Sunday morning? Come on, talk to me. You can't witness to him. No man, you lose your one chance. Hallelujah. You lose your chance. You can't do that. But the Holy Ghost give us power to witness. You will be in the van or in the car or in the bar. And all of a sudden you're going to go pay money. I draw money. And sister, how can you find yourself to witness? You start to worship. Lord God, one of my greatest platform was in the piece of old car outside. You think I little people with minister to the that they car and bring them from a church? Yes, anywhere you go. Change your argument because we are light. Change your argument because we are light. You can't tie up the devil and clap on Sunday morning. He was changed the argument. Why? Because he has a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from the money when filled. And every sin that has blood loose, they are built on the skin. We must be at the place where the sinner want to front, want to come and lead this man who have laid down his life for us. The anointing made us firm. What do you think caused Jeremiah and Mr. Bacchus to preach for 40 years? Your mother put you out, your father put you out. It was no more royalty. The king said not to come back in yard because in my Babylon, when my preach, in my jeering. But for 40 years, this young man keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. The anointing keep him firm. You know how many people are running from church to church trying to find God. You know what they want? It's not a different church. They want the anointing. For the anointing solidify you. The anointing keep you stay far. The anointing keep you going. For the anointing make room for dark season. Because in the darkness when Jesus turn up his light. Clap your hands up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many people are served. <clears throat> but in the wrong thing, they want to be firm, firm in Christ. I'm coming down. If you want to be firm, be firm in Christ. Some people are firm because they have a dead man on their right hand. Some people think they are firm because they live in an upstairs house. Sister, God, some think they are firm because they have a few that are in the bank. But I'm 
the bike in my bed. Why would I tell you I snore? I sometimes I wake up and watch a little drop on the N66. Ah, because I get a word. Can I tell you the anointing? I'm going to say it again. Bring revelation. When you are equipped, when you are connected to God, and you are pulling from the true vine, as young people, you can't remain the same. You will not sell yourself for short because you are feasting on the everlasting arms. Oh, and Jesus comes to you. I leave no bruise. When Jesus loves you, he loves you unconditionally. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his holy begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever believeth in him, should not perish. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, my sister, the anointing of God equip us for service. Are you equipped for service? What is your calling? Because you know one of the greatest problems we're having today? Nobody knows their position. But when you know your calling, I don't have to be there around when I'm talking with you. You'll stay here. I will go on the street side. Quite frankly, I should be at the, on the street side doing Sunday school. Maybe this evening. For that's my calling. You must know your calling. Ah, uh, you can't uh, apply, hallelujah, to be secretary, hallelujah, when you know you're a painter. It's the anointing that's qualified the call. So if you don't know anointing, you don't qualify for nothing. And if you realize that you don't have no calling, go back to the altar and say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. What will you have me to do? We are enabled by the Spirit of God to do ministry. Many people are enabled because they are born in 66 on their knees. Some are enabled because they say they put ring by your finger. Some are enabled because they say put gold in your mouth. Some are enabled because they say they pay the rent. Oh, but we preach to the authority. We preach to the power. It is the Holy Ghost that equipped us and enabled us to do exploit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. God is in the enabling one that gives us the power. So when we preach, we can touch life. Life will be changed. Life will be set apart. That the call of God is one of the greatest call. Yes, man. The call of God in your life is one of the greatest call. It doesn't matter you could have doctorate and all the masters and everything beside your name. And until you have the call of Christ upon your life, you have nothing at all. The Holy Spirit enables us. Hallelujah. This enables us, this enablement help us to look beyond the flesh. This, 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 this level of enablement put within us the love to keep on loving and to preach and to pray, hallelujah, and to minister to everybody. There is no bars because it's not your friend who is enabling you, but it's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, the power that comes only from the Holy Ghost. If there is not a burden in you for ministry, you got to go back to the altar. You got to cry out again. God anoint. I want you to hear this. It is God who anoint. It is God who appoint. It is God who equip. Hallelujah. And it is God who sin. It's not man. I listen to me. I said it is God who anoint you. It is God who appoints you. It is God who equipped you. It is God who saved you. Hallelujah. If it is not God, it's no one at all. If you don't know your calling, you cannot fulfill your God-given purpose. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let that one teach you. 
If you don't know your calling, you cannot fulfill your God given purpose. If you don't know your calling, you cannot fulfill your God given purpose. What is your calling? Lord, what will you want me to do? I know. He says to me, you can find it in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go in here for in our other world, and preach, and teach, baptize. Hallelujah. And you know where God said, Lo, I'll be with you. That is a quick man. That is a quick thing. I will eat any of me. Lo, I will be with you always. Are you ready this morning for the mission team? Are you ready to let God be your choice? Are you ready to surrender your all? Hallelujah to Him. Hallelujah. Are you ready to make Christ your choice? The Lord put forth His hands upon Jeremiah Boat. Many of us, you know, our oh, mouth need to be touched. I was saying it the other night in here. I heard some word of a gentleman about a role model. I was telling them, look at the chat about him. And I said, my God. The wife would tell her the year he is. So we read that bad book. So we need our mouth to be anointed. When your mouth is anointed by the power of God, your heart is touched by the power of God, you speak wisdom. You speak under the authority and the teaching of the Holy Ghost. So God touched Jeremiah's mouth. That has nothing to do with your age. God touched so when you speak, you will speak, Thus said the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Because there will be fire shut up in your body. Power to do that which no other can do. Hallelujah. When God put his word in your mouth. The reason why God put his word in Jeremiah was to pull down, destroy, show down the work of Satan and to build up God's kingdom. Do you know your purpose? Do you know your calling? And if you're calling, nobody has to beg you to eat. If you're calling, you have an energy. If, you're, if it's your calling, you're equipped. And if it's your calling, you're anointed. This morning, children of God, as a servant of God, I sit here to ask you this morning, remember your calling. And if you can't find your place, ask God, God, what will thou have me to be? What will thou have me to do? Lord God Almighty, what will thou have me to be? I need the anointing, somebody help me. Way out in my soul, I need the anointing. Things that make me old, the harvest is right, the labors are few.